So we are going to talk about the last section of our atomic structure and periodicity unit, talking about periodic trends. Now, three main types of trends that we're going to discuss, ionization energy, electron affinity, and atomic size. So first, let's look at ionization energy. This is the energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom or ion where the atom or ion is assumed to be in its ground state. So it's in the lowest energy state, and we're going to try to remove an electron. The highest energy electron is removed first, so that's the one that is least tightly bound. It's one of the balanced electrons. It's on the very outside. So the first ionization energy is the energy required to remove that highest energy electron, that first electron. And then we would go to second ionization energy, etc. Okay, so the first ionization energy is always the smallest. It's That electron is on the outside. It's least tightly held. It doesn't require as much energy to remove it. When we're removing this electron, it removes it from a neutral atom. Core electrons are bound more tightly than valence electrons, so once we've removed the valence electrons, it's going to take more energy to remove those core electrons. So in general, as we go across a period from left to right, the first ionization energy is going to increase, meaning it is harder to remove an electron. So this is because electrons that are added in the same principal quantum level don't shield the increasing nuclear charge caused by added protons. And so that um, they aren't shielded as much, and so they're more tightly held by the nucleus, making it harder to remove them. Thus, the energy is going to increase, the ionization energy. As we go down a group, the first ionization energy decreases. It takes less energy to remove an electron. And the reason for this is because as n increases, our principal energy level, our quantum level, the size is going to increase, and so as the size increases, those valence electrons on the very end are further away from the nucleus, and so they're less tightly held, so it makes them easier to remove. So let's look at an example. So consider atoms with the following electron configuration. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Okay, so we have those three. So which atom has the largest first ionization energy, and which one has the smallest second ionization energy? Well, let's talk about first ionization energy. The largest means that it is the most difficult to remove. And so <clears throat> our largest to remove, or hardest to remove, is going to be this one. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 puts us right at neon. And then um, our next one is sodium, and our next one is magnesium. Remember, within 2p, they um, are not as effectively shielded, and so they are pulled in tighter by the nucleus, and um, so these are going to be the hardest to remove, making I1 the largest. So now if we want the smallest second ionization energy, that's going to be our magnesium ion, and that's because both of these are valence electrons, and so they're on the outside. They're going to be easier to remove. And so the I2 is going to be the smallest, because once we've removed one of them, our second one is still a valence electron, whereas once we remove this electron, now we're getting into core electrons, which are harder to remove. Let's talk about our second trend, which is electron affinity. This is the energy change associated with the addition of an electron to a gaseous atom. So if the addition of the electron is exothermic, heat's being given off, then the sign is negative. This will depend on electron configuration. So nitrogen is unstable. Its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, whereas carbon is stable. Its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So in general, as you go across a period from left to right, electron affinity becomes more negative. Now there are a few exceptions, but in general, this is the rule. And as you go down a group, electron affinity becomes more positive. So less energy is released, electrons are added at increasing distances from the nucleus, so they're further away, and again, some exceptions will exist to this rule. Let's talk about the third trend, which is atomic radius. We get these values by measuring the distance between the nuclei of atoms in a covalent bond. So we bond two atoms together and we measure the distance between the, the two nuclei. If we have something that's metallic, this is obtained from half the distance between metal atoms in a solid metal crystal. 
So in general, as we go across the period from left to right, atomic radii decreases. And this is because the effective nuclear charge will increase across a period. And this means that the valence electrons get pulled in closer. Remember, they're shielded less, and so the size decreases because they're pulled in more tightly. As we go down a group, atomic radii is going to increase. And this is because the orbital size will increase as we go down principal quantum levels. We're adding more energy. Our electrons are getting further from the nucleus, so we have a bigger atom. So let's look at an example. So we want to predict the trend in radius for the following ions. So if we find all four of these ions on the periodic table, we have beryllium, magnesium, calcium, and strontium. Well, they're all in the same group, and we know that as we go down a group, atomic size is going to increase. And so we've got beryllium is smaller than magnesium, is smaller than calcium, is smaller than strontium. So let's look in general at our periodic trends. So we know that we have the largest atom down here and the smallest atom here. We know that ionization energy increases as we go across, and so it would be very tiny here. And electron affinity follows the same trend. So let's look at the properties of a group, so looking at the alkaline metals, for example. We can find lots of information on the periodic table. So groups of representative elements exhibit similar chemical properties that change in a regular way. Remember, those groups have similar chemical properties. So the number and type of valence electrons primarily determine an atom's chemistry because valence electrons are involved in bonding. We can also find electron configuration on the periodic table, and we've talked a lot about that in this unit. We also have certain groups that have special names. We have the alkali metals, the alkali earth metals. If we go over to the other side, we have noble gases, halogens. We have the lanthanides, the actinides. So some groups have special names. And we can also divide the periodic table into metals and nonmetals. So metals mainly exist on the left side. They give up electrons to form positive ions or cations. They have low ionization energies because they are giving up their electrons anyway, so it doesn't take much energy to remove them. And the most chemically active ones are found in the lower left hand because those are the largest and they have the lowest ionization energy. Now metals are kind of the opposite. They're found in the upper right corner. They gain one or more electrons to produce negative ions or anions. They have large ionization energies because they want to gain electrons, so they're not going to be very likely to give up the ones they already have. They have the most negative electron affinities, and they are their most reactive ones are found in the upper right-hand part because they're the smallest and they hang on to their electrons the most tightly. And then we have metalloids, which are kind of a combination of metals and nonmetals. They're found on the stair step, and they exhibit properties of both. Okay, so here are the check for understanding questions for the last section of this chapter, Periodic Trends. So number one, define ionization energy and explain the trend, including why it occurs both horizontally or across a period and vertically or down a group. Number two, what is the difference between first and second ionization energy? Number three, define electron affinity and explain the trend, including why it occurs both across a period and down a group. Number four, what is effective nuclear charge? Number five, define atomic radius and explain the trend, including why it occurs both horizontally and vertically. And number six, why are the most chemically active nonmetals found in the upper right-hand corner? Okay, so give these a try. We'll discuss them together in class. Have a good day.